I'm coming in with my own coaching offers to, because I've seen a lot of people like that. They're doing 15, 20,000 a month, but they don't know how to get beyond that. And really the answer is build a team, but they're not there psychologically. And so I, I think I can help them to do that where I can basically unlock seven figures a year for them. I literally hire people to do everything for me now. So I, I'm like, I'm just like, I, I'm not about to do that too. So you got it, you know, you'll get to the point to where you're just like, I, it's just better to hire someone because now you can focus on the money producing activities um, and then help have everyone else. It's just like duplicating yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ever feel like you need more of you? Like if you're already making like a half a million or or let's just say a hundred thousand a year, just imagine if you duplicated yourself five times. Now, without any more work from you or any more efforts out of yourself, now you have a half a million dollar business just simply because you've duplicated yourself five times, right? So it's just smarter to leverage other people to build a company. This is an interview with Carwana and she is the CEO of She's Got Goals. We're going to be talking about her psychology behind her business and herself. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I appreciate it. Why don't you introduce She's Got Goals and yourself a little bit, and we'll go from there. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I am Carwana D. I am a government contracts strategist um, who helps small business entrepreneurs learn how to grow their business by landing government contracts and over the past few years, I've been able to help um, upwards of 200 or plus more small business entrepreneurs add an additional three to four million dollars in revenues to their business bottom line. Of course, it's one of the biggest kept secret um, to business. But in, in a nutshell, that's what I do. All right. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I would love for you to be able to tell your backstory for how you got to govern contracts. I read about that and I thought it was really inspiring. So why don't you share that? Well, sure. Um, well, as an entrepreneur myself, I've actually been in business for over 20 years. Um, I actually walked away from you know corporate America um, at the age of 27. So I fired my boss because I had these dreams of being able to you know, have time freedom and being able to have the flexibility to be there for my children without missing those special moments. Because while I was working, I was actually missing out on like the first steps, first words, all those different things. And I'm like, no, this has to stop because these are moments that you can't capture back again. You can't get them again. So um, that's when I made the decision to really just start my business. But of course, like most entrepreneurs, um, you know, I started my business the traditional way because that's all I knew. Even even with a college degree in business, all I knew was to build a business with the bootstrap, you know, business like from the bottom all the way to the top or whatever. But even that, you know, was inconsistent, inconsistent income. And it was really hard to sustain being able to pay bills and all that stuff off of that. So I was really looking for a way to grow a thriving business without overworking myself, without having to worry about chasing customers on all those things. And that's really when I stumbled upon this biggest kept secret that I coined, um, which is the government contracting space, um, which allows for um, small business owners, everyday people just like myself to be able to participate in a multi-trillion dollar spin where the government is actually obligated to spend these monies with small business owners um, who provide products and services. And so, yeah, so I just kind of stumbled upon it, um, you know, accidentally, but it's been one of the most, um, you know, the best things actually that's ever happened to me and my life has completely changed ever since then so now i have the freedom the flexibility to be able to raise my kids to be there for every moment and all those things there's so many am amazing things that came out of that i'm glad to hear it yeah i speak to a lot of people now who are like listening to the podcast or uh they're in different entrepreneurship communities that i'm in and they're not as far along as us and they're struggling and uh yeah. i i just wish there was more that governments could do to help you know people uh you know i i spent a lot of time in china 10 years and china is really good at investing heavily into private industry now you know from an american point of view maybe that's a good thing maybe that's not i won't uh, i won't position i won't take a position on that here but um i just think it's interesting that they think that it's the government's responsibility to um to do that. So it's, it's cool that you found the opportunity. I'm curious, what was the first business that you tried to make and, and, uh, where was it that you felt like you were getting stuck? Yeah. So the first, the very first business that I started, actually, I started off with, um, a clothing line. So it was called, uh, Dyson fashion plus. So, um, I, you know, I was heavily involved in the church. And so, you know, the women would wear these nice, fancy church suits with hats and all those things. And I'm like, well, I can just, you know, start there, you know? Um, 
the struggle with that was really being able to make money on a consistent basis because I'll, I'll be able to sell suits and hats here and there, but they, these are like for first ladies, you know, so we're spending about three to $400, you know, a, a piece on an outfit. So it's like, okay, so you're just like, you have to tap into the right market of people who can really afford that. And this was like, you know, this was back in the, the, the early two thousands, you know? And so for me that, you know, that was just a lot of money for people to be able to spend, not really understanding the marketplace that I was in. Um, but I did make some money, but it's just what, it just wasn't enough, you know? Um, but yeah, so that was one of the biggest struggles is just really un trying to understand the marketing piece and how to really go from like, um, you know, just this person who just has some, you know, some items or some merchandise in hand to this person who, you know, who is tapping into technology, which we have today, which is, um, you know, building in, you know, building a website and being able to reach the masses and expand beyond who's in the circle or who's in the room. Right. So it's just like, if you're trying to sell to your friends and family, that's the hardest way to build a business. Like you really have to reach out to people who actually want the stuff that you need. And of course, um, I didn't know that getting started. So it, it was definitely a struggle. So what business did you do after that? Or, or are you, did you go directly to the government contracting from there? Ah, no, no, I love that journey. So, so after that, um, I got into the Mary Kay space. So I started doing like multi-level marketing. Um, I tried another multi-level marketing company called ACN, all of those different things. Like in those companies, like it, it, it was great because like the experience, because I learned about um, success leaders and thought leaders like John Maxwell and Zig Ziglar and all these other people, Tony Robbins, who I got to actually be in their space, like have them come to conferences and just be like in their presence, learning about all of these things about mindset and motivation and all these different things. But I really wasn't making no money in that space. But it, I mean, just the mindset alone, that personal development just helped me to see business from a whole different um, perspective. And really it, it helped me to see my greatness. Like there was so much more in me that I had to offer to the world and I didn't really know it. And also it allowed me to be able to see like, like there's the sky's the limit. Like people are having like such great success in multi-level marketing and, and in business period. Um, but where does it come from? Really, it starts within you. Like all of that stuff, um, it stems from within you. So it's just like you have to lay down all the things that uh, that you've learned. <laughs> you know, like like the miseducation of the entrepreneur. Like everything that we learned in business is com was completely wrong. Um, and everything that you learn about life is just like it's 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 backwards. It was designed to keep you like um, enslaved, really mentally working for someone else or thinking that um, you can work all these years and retire and all this stuff, that stuff doesn't happen anymore. So it's just like, we're still going about things the traditional way and then bumping our heads and wondering why it's not working. Well, the system is designed for it not to work. And so really being in that space, um, that in that, you know, the evolution of like how I grew throughout the different types of businesses and stuff like that, um, it really helped me to start seeing that and to really evolve as a person so it wasn't until like after that where i was just like i asked myself like what do i what am i really passionate about what do i really want to do and i had went to school for like um video production and um you know um and like broadcast media and all these different things i have my, i have my college degree in that as well as in business and i'm like well I want to do video. I want to do photo. And so I, I started the, my media company. I started that like, you know, in 2008, like years ago and started. And then from there, it evolved into getting contracts for that media company that I was struggling to get consistent, you know, work from. And then from there, it also it, it also created a parallel company, which is was a coaching program where I start begin sh showing other people how the government, you know, has your money. Like, you know, you could land the government as a client, which is was super awesome. So that's really like the timeline of like what happened um, during those years and how it went from having a clothing store all the way up through to where I am today. So from the point where you were realizing that you had been incorrectly brainwashed and you un unwashed yourself, or you rewashed yourself, re-brainwashed re yourself in a different way, uh, in a better way, till when you got to the contracts, where you, where you first heard of the contracts, how many years was that? Um, so it had been about five to seven years. Yeah, it, it had been like a, a seven year, a full seven year run 
between, um, you know, starting the, the production company and learning about contracts. I have been in business for like five to seven years, really um, thinking that, you know, my friends and family and people that I knew in the circle were going to like hire me to do photography and event photography or do their videos and portfolio, all those different things. And I may get one, you know, so it was really hard. And, um, and then the crazy part about it is like, when I left my, when I left my, um, corporate job, like I was literally, I was probably making in, the, you know, when I was 27, I was probably making around 80, 90,000 with overtime and all that stuff a year. So I knew that my job, you know, my business should have replaced that, but it, it didn't. So for the first five years, I was just like way under that. I was, I was probably making about 20 to $30,000 um, a year. And I was working like I'm talking about 50 hours, like with the hustle, like chasing customers, showing up to all these network and vendor shows. It was like a hustle and bustle thing. But then when I once um, when I first land, started uh, learned about government contracts the, um, and I went through the process of learning how to do it, which also took me an another couple years to learn that process. Um, it literally uh, my first contract was seventy thousand dollars. So it almost replaced my full time income where I was working 40 hours a week um, and it was just for 28 days of work. And so I was like, the numbers did not add up to me. And I'm like, wow, you can make um, what you can make in a year, in a month, like <laughs> working for yourself. Like, where have I been? Like, what's going on? And so, um, so yeah, so things have like really, really seriously changed since then. Um, I went on to land multiple contracts um, simultaneously. And before I knew it, I was like, reeling in like half a million in like, you know, six months. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I thought we went to school to, you know, to learn one plus one equals two, right? <laughs> but one plus one could really just, just depending on how you view things could really be 11, right? And so the math, the math doesn't add up. Um, you, you have greater value um, in yourself than like getting paid by the hour and stuff like that. It's just like, it's so many things that you learn. And as you untap, like some of those you know, into that knowledge, that, that the true knowledge, like tap into the truth. You know, I remember people used to be like, you got to learn the truth. And you'd be like, that person over there is crazy. But there is some truths that we really don't know, especially as an entrepreneur. It's like, it really takes a lot of reading and listening to others and, you know, going through personal development to get yourself in a, a different space so that you can actually be in a different place in your life. And then you'll be able to see that, like, you know, life is what you make it and you can actually attract abundance in so many different ways just by thinking differently. Um, and, you know, all the reasons why you were broke in the first place, like you begin to, you know, think about those things and have like an aha moment. Yeah. Um, so how old were you when you learned that specific lesson when, when you got that contract? Okay. So how old was I? I was, I was in my late, I want to say late 30. So this was probably about 12, 13 years ago. So it was about 13 years ago. Um, when I landed my first contract, it was, um, for the $70,000 for 28 days of work. Um, so 13 years later, um, you know, now I'm teaching and empowering other entrepreneurs how to do it, um, in a shorter time period to where they're not having to spend two hours trying, I mean, two years trying to figure it out. Like, you know, you, people are getting contracts, of course, in record time, but really it's just like, what do you need to do? First, it's like some of the stuff, like there's, there's all the tactics and there's all the steps that you can teach. But the m most important thing is like, you have to believe. So I, what I really try to tackle and help, you know, my clients tackle from the beginning is belief, right? All the things that you speak is, you know, it actually affects what, what you attract into your life, all those things. It really does have an effect on where you are today. So it's just like, you can't say you, you have to stop speaking. I can't. And the people said no. And I, it's too difficult and it's too hard. It's too much work. You have to start speaking life into your situation. And so that is like the most important part, all the steps, like that stuff is easy. You know, you can give a dog some steps and he probably will take those, take those steps. But, um, but it's the mindset that is the, the most difficult thing, like to really help someone change and overcome. Cause when you're in your stuff, you don't see where you're in the wrong place. Like you don't really know what you're doing wrong or that you're in the wrong space or whatever. So you really have to start like connecting 
I, I say brain share. Like you have to listen to these thought leaders who who are where you who are where you want to be because it helps you to get out of like thinking for yourself and thinking by yourself. Like you should never be doing business alone because it's like you, you can only take yourself so far. So the reason why I asked uh, how old you were then. I mm-hmm. is because I, I wanted to share a little bit of, of my experience. I yes. learned, I was very fortunate to have intelligent parents. Um, my dad's a dentist, so I, I never grew up wanting anything, but they were never wealthy. They were always upper middle class, which I'm sure most people in America would be very happy to have. Yeah. Um, but they were never wealthy. So they didn't know how to teach me about wealth or yeah. how to grow wealth. Yeah. So it, it took me going broke and shutting down my first business at 27 to yeah. finally meet someone who was willing to teach me for free yeah. Yeah. how to understand my value outside of a per, yeah. for for time measurement mm-hmm. yeah and it took me like a month or two of working with him to get it and it changed my life i can't speak like how yeah. deeply it like it could it, it changed me i mean it, I yeah. wouldn't be talking to you right now if he hadn't given me months of his time for free to help me. Right. So I'm glad you got to learn it. I know there's so many other people that need to learn it. Thankfully, I'm yeah. pretty sure the people listening to this are probably in our, our mental space where they're already making money, hopefully, so they, they get it as well. Um, but of course, it's important because coaching people, you know, the, the mindset thing is super important. I, I've spoken to other coaches in different ways, life coach, relationship coach, business coach, and every coach, the first thing they touch on is mindset because the person they're talking to is inevitably desperate for change, but there's something blocking them from making the leap and it's on us to make that happen. Yeah, Um, absolutely. So uh, I I guess I'm curious here, after all these years, are you still doing the media or are you only doing the coaching? What's the, what's the situation? So I still do both. Um, so I do both. I primarily do a lot of, a lot more coaching, but I also have a team that does like when I get media contracts and stuff like that, they do that. Um, but I still do like video production on events that are local. Um, I do like short documentary stories, but I try to get involved in those documentary stories that are like dear to me, like gentrification, on top is like gentrification and, um, you know, keeping legacy and about community leaders that were once here and, and just kind of disappeared and stuff like that. So I try to stick to those type of stories. Um, but yeah, so I do both. Um, of course, my passion is the coaching part because I love empowering and impacting the lives of others. But um, but yeah, you're absolutely, I mean, you're absolutely right. So yeah, I, I would say I was probably in uh, in my late thirties by the time I realized that I had been living life wrong. <laughs> so, and, and didn't know nothing about, you know, when you're in your twenties, you think you know it all, but I start, I, I too started learning about wealth, the wealth concept um, in my, probably in my early forties, you know, and late thirties, early forties, you know, and I was just like, wow, I was just blown away at the stuff that we don't learn. And I'm like, why don't they teach this stuff in school? You know? So I think that's why I call it the miseducation of just people in general is like, we're, pro- you know, you go through these institutions um, to be programmed, to be regular. <laughs> so it's like, how do you change that? Like, or it really starts at home. And what happens if your, your family, do, you know, you, you don't come from a family that, that knows, you know, how to create wealth. Well, you have to find someone who can teach you like you, like you found someone who was willing to sit you down and teach you. And I know you were probably blown away. And so the things that I actually learned about wealth, I actually incorporate that into my purpose of empowering and impacting um, entrepreneurs. You know, I teach them like how to take these profits that you're making with the contracts and turn it into assets and um, invest in land and be able to fix your credit because credit can give you the leverage to be able to make even bigger and greater investments and make sure that you have your life insurance and you know those those types of policies that gives you living benefits and set you up for retirement. Like these are all like things that you would think that everybody will be thinking about. Like, but people don't think about these things, which is why we have so many fundraisers when people just suddenly die it's like all these fundraisers it's like 
we have to really wake up, <laughs> you know, as a people and just see nobody's going to hand you, even if you work for a job, like nobody's going to hand you the perfect retirement portfolio, unless you're like way up there um, as a high earnings executive CEO or something like that. But nobody's going to hand that to you. And even if you do get like some type of retirement, it's just like, it's just going to be for you to live for a certain period of time because they and they base that off what they think you how long you're going to live <laughs> so it's like you really have to look out for yourself and what better way to look out for yourself than building a business that gives you unlimited earning potential to be able to create assets and to be able to develop wealth for the first time like you can be a first time generation you know wealth creator or whatever by leveraging your business to do that so um, so yeah, I love that you had someone, you know, sh that was willing to show you that because I learned it the hard way. <laughs> I was very fortunate. He actually found me, um, cause I was doing this business. It was an offline speech event and uh -huh. he was a participant. Well, he was a, an audience member and he could see that I was passionate about what I was doing, but he could also see that I was going broke in the process. Yeah. Um, and so he stepped in and he was like, look, I don't know if we can save your business, but you have massive potential. And yeah. normally I would charge people tens of thousands of dollars to learn this, but you know, I, I want to teach you. Was it Tony Robbins? No, I just went. <laughs> no, no. He's just a, a he's uh, an Israeli entrepreneur who was based in oh, China. Cool. That is super awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're still friends. I've actually invested in his business. I, I spent earlier today, some time with him building a pitch deck for his current business. Oh, how cool. Yeah. Um, so what has been your biggest fear throughout all of this in your journey? Well, um, I used to, well, well, I used to be fearful right now. Um, I'm, I'm not that fearful person anymore. I, I think that fear is the evidence, um, false evidence, you know, that appears real and is really all in your mind. So I'm more fearful to, um, not do anything than I am to have a business and to do everything that I've always wanted to do. So, um, so I used to fear um, I, that I won't be able to pay my bills. I used to fear that it's going to be a struggle in business. I used to fear that people are going to tell me no, or that if I get too big, people are going to, um, you know, think of me as I think I'm too, I'm better than them and all these things. I used to fear those things. But then when I realized that it was all just happening in my mind and it wasn't real, then I, I just stopped like, you know, being fearful with things. And even if it feels like, I'm afraid. I'm like, well, there's, that's just what I, I think that it's fear, but really it's, it's, it's something that's telling me that I need to do that very thing. Um, and so like, I don't really operate, you know, I don't operate in fear anymore. Like I just don't like, I, I really lean on like my faith and I really lean on the, the knowledge that I have now about like, um, you know, the laws of attraction and all those different things. I'm just like, well, you know, if you fear it, then it's going to actually manifest. <laughs> so I believe in that. If you fear it and you continue to fear things at a, at a high level, like it's going to manifest itself. So it's just like, you have to learn to turn that fear into power. Right. Can you pinpoint a time in which you felt this switch where the fear went away? Um, I think, I think it was like when I actually, I think, I think it had to do with like my belief when I started believing that I can succeed and accomplish things. And oh, okay. So here's, here's, here's like the, the ultimate pivotal point for me. Um, I started creating vision boards for myself. Right. Um, and I would do the work and look like literally forget that I created the vision board, but look back at it. Like years later and say, Oh my God, I did every single thing that's on there. And so it forced me to have to dream and think bigger about where do I want to go to next? And so for me, um, I think that the, it, it's, that's when it's really kind of started diminishing like the fear for me, because I'm like, there is no limit to what you can accomplish in life. If you just believe in yourself, um, and create, you know, action steps and, and do the work and you may fall down, but you got to get back up. It's the person that persevere that, that accomplishes things and that succeeds and stuff like that. And so I'm like, when I saw that that stuff became real in my life and it, and it's like, it became the truth. I'm like, okay, well, there's nothing to be fearful for about. Like if, if this happens, it happened. So what are you going to do about it? There's something that can be done about it. Right. So, yeah. So 
Do you treat the coaching and the media as two separate companies? Yes. So, and, but, sorry, go on. Yeah, and, and I have them um, separated too as two separate companies as well. So between the two, how many employees do you have? Because you mentioned teams for both. Yeah, so um, with my coaching company, I have about, I want to say 16 employees. Um, and that's crazy coming from like someone who used to struggle in business and had it all wrong in the first place. Like I literally, um, like all the things that I used to do myself, I no longer do myself. I learned that um, you have to start investing in teams to leverage your time and to become more productive, which will help your company to actually grow. But most people fear that if you hire someone, it's gonna take away from your bottom line, but literally hiring someone actually multiplies your bottom line. So it's crazy how it works, right? So it's like everything that we think because of the way that we we're, you know, we're taught and that we learn is just like, it's so backwards. It's so the other way around, like you know, literally. And so, but for my other company, um, so it's, it's myself. Um, and then I have like a team of five um, independent contractors that I would normally um, subcontract out work to. Okay. So then would you say you spend more time on the coaching? Because it sounds like it generates more money maybe. Yeah. So, um, well, not, not necessarily because it generates more money, actually. Hey, just give me 10 seconds of your time. I really appreciate you listening to the episode so far, and I hope you're loving it. And if you are, I would love to ask you to subscribe to the channel because what we do is a lot of work. And every week we bring you a new guest and a new story. And what we do requires so much love so that we can bring you something amazing. And every week we're trying really hard to get better guests that have better stories and improve our ability to tell their stories. So your subscription lets the algorithm know that what we're doing is fantastic and no commitment, it's free to do. And if you don't like what we're doing later on, you can always unsubscribe. And either way, we would love a like if you don't feel like subscribing at this time. Thank you very much. And we'll take you back to the show now. They were kind of neck and neck. Um, as far as like, you know, cause these are con the contracts are quite large. You know, when you do contracting with the government, those are like lucrative multiple six figure contracts for less than, you know, part-time work. Um, and, but then like coaching allows you to be able to expand, especially coaching online, um, expand your reach like nationally, if not internationally, depending on what it is that you're offering. And so because uh, I'm able to expand my reach and I have a bigger team, which allows me to be able to do um, work, work smarter as well as evergreen, like all the way that I have the business, um, systemized, it allows me to serve more people simultaneously, um, in a system, right? So it's different from working one-on-one -on -one with someone. So I was able to like also have a multiple six figure, um, you know, coaching business that has gone on to make millions, um, as well. So as your business, as the coaching business has grown or rather as both businesses have grown, Mm -hmm. how have you seen your role change in them? Obviously you mentioned delegation, you mentioned the psychology behind needing to not yeah. do so much yourself. So yeah. as, as those, as the second business developed and as your team grew yeah. on the other side, the coaching side, how did you see your role change within both companies and where do yeah. you feel you, your attention is needed the most yeah. on a daily basis? Good question. So um, I've actually evolved from the person that did everything myself to um, growing into becoming a real uh, chief executive officer who delegates work, who's the who cast the vision of the company and kind of oversee the different departments and the different moving parts. And so um, that's basically who I've evolved to be like. Um, a, you know, basically I, I just call myself the overseer <laughs> of things. Yeah. So, and then I, and then I also learned like there's so many different levels, you know, to business. Um, you know, initially I just thought you have a business and you do the work, right. You get paid to do some work and that's it. But there's so many, so many other moving parts. There's like, you have to understand the marketing and branding. And then there's like the authority building. And so there's like media and all this stuff. And then there's like the accounting and the numbers and all these different things. And then there's like so many different parts Then there's like sales and training. And, um, it's just like, it's crazy. And so you can't possibly do that all by yourself. You have to have a team and in order for you to have a team, you have to you know, be well-trained in order so that you can train your team and then 
develop other leaders. So now I consider myself to be not only the overseer, but a leader of leaders. So I, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile earlier and you call yourself a she, a, a she EO, oh, yeah. which I, I thought was funny. Yeah. Um, so I've, the, the way that I've learned about business in, in the recent past is like, first you do, then you hire people to do, and then you hire people to manage those who do, yeah. and then you hire people to manage those who manage. Yeah. So would you say you're at that level with the coaching or are you starting there or? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. So, um, I did now, um, I hired people to do, and then I have, I have, I have people who manage the people who do, <laughs> and then I have people who manage the people who manage the people that they, you know, that do It's like, it does go leap. It goes deep, you know? So, but yeah, I feel like I'm there. Um, when you're at that point, it's like, you're at the the point of like scaling. So like even that, like there's different pivotal points in your business. Like there's a growth point where, where you're, or developing first, there's like the developing point and then there's the growth point. And then like, when you have the systems in place, you can actually scale your business. So really I'm at the point of scale. Now what's next for me? I don't know just yet. <laughs> you know, what's at, what happens after scale? I get, I guess that, that, uh, acquisition, like acquiring other companies and stuff like, I don't, maybe that's what's next. I don't know, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting there, but right now I'm at scale. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I heard that, uh, basically, and, and what I, what I've seen is when you do, you can really do a few hundred thousand a year, unless you're doing contracts, then obviously that's a totally different game. But like for, for most businesses, you're, you're stuck at about a quarter million, maybe half a million yeah. if you're like burning out. Door. When, Absolutely. Once you start to hire the first few people, maybe five, six people, then you can hit above a million a year. Yeah. Then you get to like the, the managers and then maybe you can get to like four or five million a year, five, eight, but you're, you eight, really eight, can't eight, hit eight. 10 million a year until you've got those leaders of leaders. Yep. And um, I haven't gotten there myself in terms of any business, but um, I'm excited to try yeah. with, with this new one I'm doing. So that, I mean, that, and that's the thing is like most people are in business and they're so like completely solopreneurs and there is like either they're stuck because they don't understand how to really build a business. Um, they don't really understand how to leverage things like business credit and how their personal credit really pay, you know, plays a role being able to get funded for their business so that they can grow. So they're stuck trying to do everything. They feel like if I do it all by myself, then I'll keep all the money or I'll make the most money, but really you stagnate yourself and you, you're, you're unable to grow. So when the, when when you do try to get funding, they're like, oh, you don't have the capacity. They see things from, you know, the, the bird's eye view is like, you don't even have the capacity to grow beyond where you are because of you're trying to do it all by yourself. And so you got to get unstuck for sure. Yeah. That's where I'm coming in with my own coaching offers to, cause I, I've seen a lot of people like that. They're doing 15, 20,000 a month, but they don't know how to get beyond that. And really the answer is build a team, but they're not there psychologically. And so I, I think I can yeah. help them to do that where I can basically unlock seven figures a year for them. I um, literally, I literally hire people to do everything for me now. So I, I'm like, I was just like, I, I'm not about to do that too. So you got it. You know, you'll get to the point to where you're just like, I, it's just better to hire someone because now you can focus on the money producing activities um, and then help have everyone else. It's just like duplicating yourself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you ever feel like you need more of you? Like if you're already making like a half a million or, or let's just say a hundred thousand a year, just imagine if you duplicated yourself five times now without any more work from you or any more efforts out of yourself. Now you have a half a million dollar business just simply because you've duplicated yourself five times. Right. So it's just smarter to leverage other people to build a company. Oh yeah. I, I'm no stranger to, uh, yes. to hiring people. Yeah. I, yeah. I love hiring people because the, so I, I love challenging myself to learn new skills. So like with coaching, I've, I've been learning so much about different things I've never touched before in my previous businesses, yeah. which is cool, but I don't want to do any of that stuff. Yeah. Like I love learning about it, but I don't want to do any of it. Like I just want to coach. I just want, I want to interview people. I want to show up for the interview yeah. and I want to show up to coach and I want everything else to be done by other people because I really yeah. don't want to touch any of the rest of it. It's just, not well, you I can do, do that too. Like I literally, um, there's companies that like you can outsource 
all the other pieces to your coaching program and they'll do all that work like the marketing the copywriting like all that stuff and all you do is just show up to coach like there's companies yeah. that literally does that yeah no i know i i'm more familiar with hiring people in house i I've tried agencies before. It depends. Some agencies are good. Some are not. It's really a skill in finding an agency. It's like hiring an employee. It's like making sure these people will jive with you. Yeah. Um, And a lot of them don't. A lot of them that you might think they do and the quality of their people isn't great, but that's a different, um, a different conversation. I know like tens of thousands of thousands of dollars, like later, I'm like, these people, you know, these agencies lying. Like <laughs> they're they're good at marketing tactics. Like they make you believe that they're really going to deliver, but at the end of the day, it becomes a job for you. <laughs> so I'm I'm curious. Then, what has been your most expensive? I, I don't. I haven't decided what word to use yet. Whether it's a mistake or a decision, I think that's up for the individual to decide. But I ask this of of every um, person I interview. So what, what is your most expensive decision? We'll call it. And, and if you can put a number to it, how much was it? Yeah, I would say, um, the, the biggest decision that I never made, (laughs) is that what it is? Like the biggest, the, the, the most expensive decision that I never made was not learning about contracts earlier, like literally, because like all of those years that I was struggling at. $20,000, $30,000, $20,000, I could have been making a million dollars a year. So it was costing me about $880,000 a year for that seven year period that I was not doing that. So you do, you multiply that together. That's multiple millions um, of dollars that was on the table that I actually left on the table. I'm um, simply because lack of knowledge or just not making the decision to do it sooner. Because in the earlier years of even after I found out about um, government contracting, like um, I drug my feet because I didn't really know what it was. And, you know, so when I look back, I'm like, dang, I could have been doing that way back when my life would have changed (laughs) like way back when. So I would say that was one of the biggest um, indecisions, like the most expensive indecisions that I've never made uh, for me. So was there uh, so obviously I don't want to downplay that. That's obviously Mm -hmm. money you don't want to mess with. But obviously we also can't really waste time thinking too much about that Mm -hmm. because if 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 I were to tell you now some of those uh, you would be beside yeah. yourself with uh to be fair it was a good bit yeah. more than what you just mentioned um yeah. so what was the most expensive thing that you spent money on or that you yeah i guess what's the most expensive thing you spent on and it doesn't yeah. have to be a bad thing it could be a good thing yeah. something that like you love that just makes you feel good about yourself yeah so I, I would say the the biggest advance is like because I don't, I don't kind of look at things like now what when I spend money I, I spend it on purpose like I'm a purpose spender and so like for me um, the biggest investment I would say that I've made was on a coach um, the greatest investment on, was on a coach and it was probably about fifty five thousand dollars but this coach actually had the knowledge that I needed to break into um, and literally um, by learning the concepts that he had to teach me, I actually made, um, uh, had a multiple six figure day, right? So most, most business owners don't even have like six figures or multiple six figures in a year, but I was able to do that in a day just by leveraging this person's knowledge. And so that was like one of the greatest investments, um, that I ever made in myself. But even before I got there, I want to say this, um, when I was a struggling entrepreneur, I didn't really understand like the, the purpose of investing in myself. Like I was a very cheap person. And so when I would go to business and networking events, and then they would have these vendors um, of all of these different, like um, MailChimp will be there and like Square and like all these different people that are like, use this service. It'll help you grow your business. You know, pay me $25 a month or pay me $50. I'm like, nope, I'm gonna do this by myself. I'll send out all my emails. No, I don't need Square. I could just do PayPal for free, all those different things, right? So I didn't understand that. Um, just that one $25 a month to help you build an email list that you can print money on demand. I didn't understand those things. And so at that time, the first time I've ever made an investment because I wanted to build a coaching program, it was a, it was a $2,000 investment. Now, like I'm the person that didn't even pay $25 a month, right? I was, I was very cheap, but when I made the $2,000 investment into, um, for the first time ever into my business, that was a huge stretch for me, but it's like, I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired and sick and tired of just like struggling. Um, and so that, that $2,000 investment turned into a, 
um, a ten thousand dollar month for me. Like I didn't, you know, that I had never experienced that because at that time I was only making like you know twenty thousand a year. So it's like a ten thousand dollar month. Like what is going on? And so investing in yourself, I learned that you have to spend money, you have to release. Um, and actually do the work in order to receive, right? So it's like, that's when I learned the principles of like reaping the harvest after you sow the seed. And so for me, it's like, for those who don't get that, they stay stuck, literally. I This is what I know as a coach, people who don't get the, the concept and the principle of giving to receive, they stay, those are the people that stay stuck where they are. Very valuable. I'm curious what that coach taught you, the $55,000 coach. Um, so it was really like the, I would say sales psychology, the, the, the psychology behind sales and systems and, um, what do we say? Like really hitting your avatar. So really one of the, so one of the things was just like, so all my marketing was like, um, leading people towards, um, pleasure, right? Oh, take this class and you'll learn how to make a million dollars, right? Leading people towards pleasure that and so what he taught me was like that's like um a candy you know a candy truck or a man in a car coming by and saying hey i got this sucker for you do you want it well we were been taught don't talk to strangers and definitely don't take no candy from from you know from a strange man right um and so that's how people see those type of messages most of the people see that as oh they're lying or it's a scam or you know something like that um in the marketplace but what he taught me was like lead people away from their pain if you lead people away from their pain um then they're more inclined so it's like that same that same man um, you know, who roll up, you know, who, who rolls up in a car with a sucker, if you fall and you know, you're a kid, you fall and you scrape your knee and you're crying. And then he come and he comes and pick you up and say, Hey, do you want a sucker? Yes. You want that sucker. Cause because why? Because he, he, he's helping you ease your pain. Right. So just that psychology, um, behind that was just like, instead of being stuck or instead of chasing customers, here's what you can do. Here's a customer that's already ready to chase you. Right. And that's the government. And so just switching the messages, you know, so that made the world of a difference for me. That's incredible. Uh, and yeah, I, I totally understand that part, um, from the, the psychology part, uh, sales oh. is very fascinating. Um, yeah. How long did you work with this man um, before you before that that switch flipped? Yeah, for me, um, probably about I think I want to say within the first three to six months. Yeah, within the first three to six months. And then, how long after you were like, "Oh, what?" Yeah, did you have that uh, multiple six figure month uh, day? Yeah, so. Um, like it was, it was almost pretty much immediate. Like, um, as soon as I applied the techniques, like within that month, I had the six figure day. And in fact, I've gone on to have multiple six figure days. And so now, um, my goal is to have a six figure, um, six, uh, not a six figure, a million dollar day, because I know it's possible. I've already reverse engineered like the numbers and the psychology that has to go behind that. And I'm like, we can do this. So that is my next level of, of, of goal to have the, the million dollar day. Things that people don't even like, you'll never hear somebody talking about, Oh, I want to have a million dollar day. Like, but when you invest in yourself to of people who's actually doing that, you learn what's possible, right? So you're learning outside of like your norm that there's other things that are possible. Like most people dream of having, of making $10,000 a month. Like I used to be there, right? But when you realize you can make $10,000 in a day, now it's time for you to start thinking about six figure days. Or when you make six figure days, it's time to start thinking about multiple six figure days or and so on and so, so on. So it's like the levels, you know, you got to continue growing and developing and see that, you know, there's, there's people that's out there doing it. Right. Like Warren Buffett, is, he's, a, he's probably the, one of the most richest men in the world, but he doesn't necessarily have to be the only. Right. So it's like you have to learn to grow along with them. Yes. So how did you actually uh, achieve that uh, large amount in a day? Did you do like a webinar or something? Was this like a conversion from some sort of event? Yeah. So it was a conversion from like an, an event. Mm -hmm. So I had like a five day challenge, which I normally have like these challenges um, that leads people away from their pain <laughs> into something that they desire to have. And so at the end, you know, you make the offer and then, excuse me, you make the offer. And then, um, basically, you know, everybody's like, yeah, I want that. And so that's how I ended up having basically the six figure day, but really like 
business, what I learned is more of a numbers game than anything. So it's like, if you do the numbers and you hit those KPIs, it's like the results are going to be what they are, you know? Right. Of course. So have you ever thought about stopping either of these companies? <laughs> yeah. So that's a good question. So I have, I have thought about stopping my, uh, my media company. I have because I enjoy coaching so much. Um, plus it gives me the ability to be able to travel and do coaching from anywhere in the world, all those different things. Like with the media stuff, like you kind of got to be, um, where, where you're, you know, where you're doing the business at, like you have to have a studio or maybe, or just equipment and all that stuff. It's, it's more difficult to travel to do that. So, I mean, I've thought about it a, a million times and every time I, I'm like, I'm done with that business. My husband was like, no, you can't do that. <laughs> so you can't, you can't do that. So, and so he will build a team to go out and do the work. He's like, just get the contracts and you know, we'll go out and do the work. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So that's where I am with it now. I just get the contracts and then I hire other people to go out and do the work. So your husband manages them? Yeah, so he manages them, yes. Brilliant, you got yourself a CEO, I love yeah. it. <laughs> it's it's not very often that uh, the husband is running the business for the wife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I love it, I love it. Yeah. I've tried to do businesses with my previous uh, girlfriends before and um, it just doesn't work for me, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but I actually interviewed someone last year. Uh, she had a, a business with her husband, where they were helping people. I guess like starting companies. They were lawyers, so like, but like they put it online. I think they were like one of the first companies, like in America, online that you could like start a, you could incorporate. Yeah, and they ended up selling the business for like twenty million, like in two thousand eight or something. And they were like super happy. They waited their three years from the NDA and like waited. And then they started the same business again. And they're due 10 million a year. Wow. With this business. Wow. And and they they made it work. I mean, they had their issues, but yeah. like and, and they were at a point where they were ready to kill each other. <laughs> but they figured it out. Yeah. And like it's just it's great. So I mean, I I, I maybe you don't work with him so much on a daily basis, no, but but all. they're like in it with each other every day, all day long. Yeah. No, that's um, awesome. And like, for me, I don't know if I could do that. I think I'd rather <laughs> my wife have her own thing. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. So it, it's, I'm glad that he had the sense to tell you don't stop it. Yeah. When, when I had my last successful business before I started the tech company and, and mm -hmm. the coaching, I, I saw the market winds changing and I decided to shut down. Yeah. Because even though it was printing money like crazy, yeah. I didn't see a way forward with that business because of the market. Like it just was clear the market was dying. Yeah. Like fast. And it 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 just hit like that. Like it was it it was so un like it was so like I didn't know it was gonna happen and then it just happened. Um, yeah. and I just had to adapt. Mm -hmm. And I kind of kicked myself for a few years about it because I walked away from something that was printing money. Yeah. You know, and, and now I'm, I'm rebuilding that again. Yeah. So like you almost stopped something that was printing money, you yeah. know? So it's, uh, so I'm glad that your husband had that sense to be like, no, nah, don't do that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> because, be, because let, let's say for example, the government changes its law and stops offering contracts. Yeah. You're, you're out of a coaching business. And if you shut down your business and now you've shut and your coaching business goes out. Yeah. Then you now you've stop. got no... Right. You, you have money that you've made, you've built a portfolio, I'm sure, yeah. but you're still young and you still have things you want to do. You're going to start at scratch in your fifties and like, that sucks, yeah. you know? So, so like, it's, it's very smart to hedge your bets in that regard. Yeah. That's true. Um, do you ever regret starting either of these businesses? Not at all. Yeah. I think for me, starting, my, starting both of my companies and and like even the the businesses that i no longer do like when i very first started like the clothing line the mary Kay, the the other mlms like all of that stuff actually helped me to develop and to evolve into the being the person who i am today which is completely different from the person who you know grew up struggling and thought that that was the way of life and that that was the norm and so I don't have a single regret and I will probably do it all the same again, you know, because it helps you to evolve. Yeah. Fair enough. When you started this journey, did you have a number in mind that you wanted to earn for you to feel like you could retire? Yeah. 
So um, initially I thought that number was like a hundred thousand. That's because I had limited beliefs. <laughs> like a hundred thousand dollars is nothing. No, like I didn't know that then, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, the reason why I had that number in mind when I first started is because I was probably making about 80 to 90,000 when I was working for corporate America. And so I, that's why I gauged it by that. So I was like, okay, well, if I kind of get to the hundred thousand dollar a year type of range, then I'll be good. Um, but as far as like retiring, like, what do I, do I have a number now? Like, what do I, where do I want to retire at? It's probably going to be in the billions. And so I really have a game plan right now um, for when I do want to retire in the next 10 to 15 years to be at the billion. So it's like, you have to really start thinking about leveraging other things. Like that's where all the, the other wealth create wealth building assets and stuff come into play, like life insurance and like investing in stocks and all that stuff, because like the numbers are real. And if you like, if you hit if you hit the the targets and the milestones, then you know you're going to be at the one point or two point something billion dollars in the 10 to 20 years that you plan to get there. So, yeah. So now that's like my number. Um, I will be OK with like, you know, a couple, you know, a few million. But like I really want to hit the billion that way. I know I'll never have to <laughs> I'll never have to do another day of anything, you know, if, if I'm there. Yeah, fair enough. I, I love this question because everyone has a different answer. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people kind of end up where you are, which is like, I don't need it, but like, if I could do it, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I've made five. I've made 10. Yeah. Well, maybe I can make 50. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've made 50. Can I make a hundred? Okay. I made a hundred. Can I make a billion? Yeah, it's more like a, a personal challenge than yeah. anything else. Even yeah. though your life at five and your life at a hundred are probably the same, yeah, ish. Like yeah. there's probably because you, like, unless you're buying jets and villas all over the world, yeah. like you, you don't need. You them. can't really spend it. You can't, yeah. Unless you're like, unless you have you know twenty nieces and nephews and you're putting all of them through college, yeah, you could spend yeah. a million very fast. Yeah. That's true. Especially in America. Yeah. So what's something you know you need to change, but you haven't yet? You just, you're, you're avoiding doing it. What is that? Ah, um, I don't know if there's anything that, let me see that, that I need to change really. I mean, I think, I think the only thing is like, I'm a spiritual person. So, you know, I grew up in the church and all that stuff. And so as I began to like grow and develop and expand in business, like I kind of gotten away from, you know, the church a little bit, but I'm still spiritual. So it's like, I feel like I want to kind of go back into that zone, but I just haven't really done it yet. Um, because also at the same time, I'm like, I'm now aware that, you know, spirituality comes from within, <laughs> you know? So, um, but it's still, it's still a great thing to just be in, you know, the circle of other believers and stuff like that. So that's, that's one thing for sure. Do you think there's a disconnect between entrepreneurship, the pursuit of money and spirituality? I think so. Yeah, I believe, I believe so. Because entrepreneurship, like business is, is, is completely a spiritual walk. You know, um, I learned that when I opened up the book, the secret, and I learned about like the laws of attraction, all that stuff is spiritual, you know, and even in the Bible, when they talk, when, you know, when they talk about give and it shall be given unto you, press down, shaking together, run it over and all that stuff, all that stuff, like it's, it's in business. Like if you give, like you plant seeds, it will be given back to you, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That, those are spiritual concepts that comes from the Bible, but it also is so much very relevant in business. That's it, in business, it's called a return on your investment, right? But you got to do the work. And so, um, yeah, I, I believe there's a total disconnect because most people don't really understand that you have to be in total alignment with yourself, spirituality. Like you can't have all this negative energy and think that you're going to attract like the right customers. You're going to attract like greatness and abundance in your life. If your heart is like stony, like that stuff does not work. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think, I think that 
um, there's, there's a complete disconnect. Most people don't know that they're related business and religion or not religion, but, um, spirituality, um, is definitely totally and completely related. Um, and normally if, if there's a business on like traditional business owners that are not spiritual people, they're, they'll, um, they'll see like something about manifest, manifest this into your life. And you think it's like, oh, this is voodoo is crazy. Right. But that stuff is real. <laughs> you manifest everything that you have in your life, you've actually manifested it into your life. Whether you intentionally did it or not, it all comes stems from your belief system, which is a spiritual thing. It all stems from what you speak out of your mouth, right? Words have power. That's spiritual. That's also biblical. Um, and then it becomes, you know, manifests into in reality for you. So we're all manifesting things. And in, in business, you also need to remember consciously or unconsciously, you're manifesting the whether you succeed in business or not so you definitely have to have some type of spiritual nurturing or relationship uh, with a higher being or a higher source for sure what are you currently learning um so i'm currently right now so i, I have this this method that i do on a daily basis um i call it the 555 and what I do is five minutes of meditation, five minutes of affirmations, and then five minutes of um, educating myself on something that I, I want to learn, right? So I do that at the top of the morning because what I what I discovered was like, it's so easy in business to just like, your days end up going like just like this. Like <laughs> you start up in the morning, the phones ring, the emails are popping, people are calling un, you know, unsolicited and all this stuff. And it's like, it's so many distractions and so many things that can kind of throw you off being productive for that day. So it's like, you really have to learn to control your day and take your power back so that you can be most highly effective as an entrepreneur. And in order to do that, you have to first, the first thing when you wake up is like to get in alignment, right? The whole spiritual thing, you have to get in alignment and, you know, so say your affirmations and um, meditate on things and all those different things so that when the phones do ring or if you do get a pop-up um, unsolicited visit from someone, it doesn't throw your energy off. Because once your energy is thrown off, then, you know, that whether you have you desire to have a, a ten ten thousand dollar day or six figure day is like it's off like you you can't even achieve that because now you've been disrupted and so those are the things that i'm learning like how to be a better me how to show up to be the best entrepreneur every single day how to show up um to be the best you know mom and family because I'm, I'm a mompreneur now too as well so i actually just had a baby about a year ago and so he just turned one last last week and so being able to now have a have the business that gives me the freedom um, to do the things that I, I left my job 27 years, I mean, at the age of 27 to do, to be able to be there for my kids and have the flexibility and to be able to live that today as a mompreneur um, and still impact the lives of others. Like it's, it's a whole, you know, I mean, it's, it's such a blessing, right? So I'm learning to do all of those things. I'm learning to be the best me, the best parent, the best well-evolved um person i just want to clear something real fast sure you said you just had another baby a year ago yes i did i had my baby <laughs> 46 <laughs> i'm 47 and just okay. had a baby a year ago yes i didn't think that was possible Aha! you're funny because like my brother didn't think it was possible he, like i don't know i think it's a men thing <laughs> I think that like men don't think that's possible, but yeah, it's, it absolutely is. I mean, I, I guess, it, I guess it's possible, but rare. It's, it's actually, it's okay. So it's rare to people, to most people, like it's rare to most people. Um, but when you think about it, like there's so many, like my doctor actually had her first baby when she was 50. So when you're in it, like you see that Janet Jackson didn't have her first twins until she was like 55. Like celebrities do it all the time. Hispanics Jeez. do it all the time. Um, in fact, I, I saw a father who just had a baby and he was like in his, his sixties. And so people do it. It's just like, well, tradition the father's age doesn't matter. Yeah. But the mom, yeah. But traditionally um you know people are like oh i'm gonna stop having babies in my 20s right so it's like that's like 
they, it became their norm, right? But me, I'm very irregular. I, I consider myself to be irregular. I don't want to have normal money. I don't want to have a normal lifestyle. I don't want to have normal rules. I don't want to have limitations. So I'm like, so when people are like, you had a baby in your 40s, I'm like, yeah, don't put your limits on me. Those are the limitations that you set for yourself not to have a baby at 40. I, I live limitless. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I have limited income potential. I have limited, you know, limited, I have no limitations on where I can go, what I can accomplish and all those things. And so that is also a part of my, you know, my belief system. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have a baby at 40 so I can be able to do all the things that I dreamed about doing, be there for every moment, enjoy and cherish. Like this is the re very reason why at the age of 27, when I wasn't able to do all these things, I left my job. I didn't know it was going to take me 20 years to get here, but it did, but I'm here. So now I get to live in that. Cool. Well, congrats. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I look at my own life and I'm 36 now. The, mm -hmm. the chance of me having a kid at 40 is probably pretty high. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I was married before and divorced. We never had a kid, so okay. I would have yeah. to get married again. And that, yeah. that's why there's this, uh, this time yeah uh, I'm last yeah so last question I have for you what is the most important thing you feel you've learned in your life so um, far because you still have more to learn okay so the most important thing um that I, I think I think for me um I mean that's that's kind of I mean I've learned so many things like I don't know what's like most important but I think for me just like I think one of the well what I rank is one one of the most important things is just learning who I am like learning discovering the greatness that's within me you know and so um you know especially like I grew up in the inner city, you know I came from like middle class family I mean it's the, it's the same story that most people who have achieved high success like they have a lot of the same stories it's like but it's like somebody has to whisper in your ear who you are so that you can see life from a different lens than where you are right and so like for me being able to be around other people who i actually was able to look up to and like dream like i can have that lifestyle and stuff one day um and just discovering that it's all within me so if I want it, I can, you know, I can achieve it. And so being able to like find myself, I think that's one of the most, um, the best things that I ever, I've ever learned about myself is that um, there is no limits to what I can do. Uh oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. I said, okay, well, thank you very much for your insight. I appreciate yeah. your time and your energy. Sure. And uh, we'll end that here. All right, cool. Thank you. I hope this was good for you. <laughs>